Take a look at the tail of the tape. Julio Gonzalez undefeated coming into this fight, age 24. Royce Jones Jr., 32 years old, coming in. A slight reach advantage uh, going to or toward Julio Gonzalez, but Julio uh, is going to come in here and tell us that he's going to give us everything that he can give us to make sure that he takes the fight to Roy Jones Jr. Final instructions will be forthcoming from referee Raul Caiz. As soon as they meet in the ring, let's check out their hey, demeanor toward Keep one punches, another. It's been pretty cordial Remember. throughout the Keep your punches press up. conference. Remember to obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Let's go to your corners. We're scheduled for 12 rounds. Alan Mazengel with Rich Murata alongside here at Staples Center in the city of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Final instructions from Matt Kurahara, who looks curiously like Mr. Miyagi of the uh, Karate Kid movies. <laughs> that is Julio's trainer. He goes by Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> he really does. He says so. I didn't do that name because I can't pronounce it every time. Here we go. Round one. Scheduled for 12. Let's see what kind of heat Gonzalez can put on Roy Jones Jr. He's much slower than Jones. Jones in the powder blue trunks. Gonzalez in the white trunks with the Mexican colors. There's that first flashing left jab from Jones. You saw the quickness. Sometimes you don't see it. Like the old joke. Want to see it again? <laughs> uh, Jones is obviously confident. But he says, I've got a fighter in front of me, he's going to fight, and that's going to bring out the best of me. A little flicking jab from Gonzalez. Coming out, and he knows he's up against a very quick, talented, powerful fighter. This is Gonzalez's shot to shock the world. Jones throwing from all angles. Gonzalez pressing forward. Good right hand for Gonzalez, and he went to the body downstairs. Yeah, I like the left hook to the body by Gonzalez. Good, solid punch. That's what he wants. Gonzalez knows what he's got in front of him. He knows all about Jones. He knows how fast he is, and he knows he's going to have to eat some leather here tonight. Well, he's prepared to do that, as he's been telling us. Staples Center is packed tonight. Boxing fans here to see the best in the world, Roy Jones Jr. And there's a punch inside, quick to the jaw of Gonzalez. Didn't even see it coming. Tremendous left hook. It didn't look like it traveled very far. Maybe a foot. A brilliant punch by Roy Jones Jr. And knocked Gonzalez right off his feet. It was so quick. A little hook inside that it was hard to catch. But Gonzalez certainly knew it was there. Gonzalez right back up after the knockdown. What a punch that was. Gonzalez already looked slowed down because of that punch. And there were many who felt that Jones, because of the styles tonight, even though Gonzalez may have been better than the opponents that he's been facing lately, and styles make fights, but Gonzalez might be made to order for him, and he would have a quick knockout. Exactly right, because there's the same angle that he threw it at. That one just missed. Gonzalez trying to bear in, but he's going, got an uppercut, just hit him, and then a left hit him in the face. And Gonzalez is now just standing there trying to hold on. Gonzalez is here to fight. He's, he's going to fight him. with every last ounce of energy that he has. A left just hit him square. His eyes are going crossed. You can see that he's definitely tagged. He's been tagged, he's been dinged, he's been knocked down, but he will go back to his corner having survived the first round. That was some tough punches, Rich. All right, it was like lightning. There it is, just a short little oh. left hook inside. Traveled, it looked like about eight or nine inches. Boom. The short little crisp, concise punches like that often do the most damage. Ask the fighters who fought Joe Lewis. 
Well, from one angle, you could even see it in slow motion, but when you got behind him and saw it, there it was. And it looked fast in slow motion. What a devastating punch. But here we are in round two. Roy Jones Jr. dominating the first round. Julio Gonzalez knows he's going to have to get in there and just throw away and hope something lands. Matt Kurahara, his trainer, told him, don't let this guy in. intimidate you. In other words, he wants Gonzalez to get out there and throw punches. Forget about that he's got Roy Jones Jr. in front of him. Oh, another left inside, and he felt that one, too. That punch, I don't know how you stop that, Rich. I, it's just, it comes and it's there before you can even react. Well, there hasn't been anybody yet who has. Roy's 32 years old, but his punch, his fists are still blazing fast. That was a nice little effort there from Gonzalez because he's a bigger guy, taller guy, and if you can get in there and force him back a little bit, maybe land a body blow. There was one where he held up on. There's some body shots as Roy just covers up now. And Gonzalez kind of backs off from it. He's not going to buy it. He's not going to buy it. In that case, you're probably not going to land head punches. But you know something? Throw some punches anyway. Hit him on the arms. Hit him on the, you know, on the shoulder. Hit, hit him somewhere to maybe cause a little pain in some way. That's, you know, Marciano used to hit you all over your body. Arms, knees, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it hurt. Because it would wear you down that way. Just keep throwing. He's always trying the right hand. He's keeping his head back a little bit now because he's already gone down in the first round. Ah! Round two, schedule 12. For the light heavyweight chest in the world. There's one that whizzed by the nose of Gonzalez. Good body shot from Gonzalez. You hear that solid thumping sound. Gonzalez chasing Roy around the ring now. Jones was told by his trainer out in Murchison uh, between rounds, don't load up. Let the knockout come naturally. So he didn't want him going out there going crazy with uh, Gonzalez. And Jones has fought a disciplined round. Another punch that landed around the chin of Gonzalez. Jones makes anybody look slow, but Gonzalez is going to have to get in there and get more aggressive. Downstairs, if you can. There's the quickness of Jones. Here we go, round three from Staples Center in Los Angeles. Alan Madison, Gail with Rich Morata. And Rich, must be nice to be able to tell your fighter to go out there and do whatever you want to do, basically, is what they were saying. We touch him upstairs, hit him downstairs. Got a little delay here as they mop up some water in the Gonzalez corner. It looks as though they feel in Jones' corner that they can win this fight about whenever they want, whatever way they want. But it, it looks to me like they want to do it in a, an intelligent manner. Gonzalez pressing the action a little bit. Gonzalez is landing some body punches. Good right hand from Jones. So quick. Just counter so quick. Good off the counter every time. And it's just got to paralyze you knowing every time you make a move, there's a price to be paid for it. But if you're going to beat Roy Jones Jr., that's the only way to do it. Until someday he slows down, you know. <laughs> Gonzalez getting his directions in the second round. We're in the third round, scheduled 12. Good right hand from Gonzalez through the defense of Jones. Looked nice, didn't do much damage, but it was a good right hand. Here's Jones countering. Speed, quickness, balance, you name it, he's got it. Not to mention power from every angle. 
He has the edge, uh, certainly, you would think, in every category. With the possible exception of heart. And we know Gonzalez has a great heart because it's been proven. Jones hasn't faced a real crisis situation yet in his pro career. So it becomes a little harder to judge that way. What would Roy do if he was battered around the ring or cut? Well, he's having to deal with the size of Gonzalez here, a natural light heavyweight. Well, Gonzalez really makes it up and chasing Jones across the ring. He wants to fight now. Trying the uppercut, trying to body shot. He's throwing a lot of body punches. He's concentrating much of his attack in that direction. He feels he's got to take the legs away from Jones and slow him down some. So in that way, he's adhering to a fight plan. In all of those combinations, at least one or two punches will go to the body. Very aware of that left hook that he tasted in the first round, protecting himself from it. The right hand, the glove up high. You have to wonder when Jones is going to jump out. That's the end of the third round. Look, Jones is a counter puncher, so when you punch, when you're done, he's going to punch back. You've got to get right back on him after he counters. You go right back to him. We'll see if he can do it. Round four, scheduled for 12. Boy Jones Jr. in the blue trunks. Gonzalez in the white trunks. The only blemish on Jones' record was a disqualification. Gonzalez forcing Jones into the corner now. It's smart to hit to the body because a lot of the punches that Gonzalez throws are looping punches. They come from the outside, and Jones actually will dip his head forward and they'll go around behind him. He'll actually, he can actually step into a punch and have it go behind him. Always had tremendous defense, the ability to even hit while going away in some occasions. Gonzalez willing to try to throw things in the exchange. That one kind of smarted a little bit right on the nose. We're in the fourth round. Jones, nice right hand. Ooh. Boxing is a quickness sport. When you can just stand back there and load that up and then land it like that, that's scary. Body shot to Gonzalez. Jones has picked up the heat in the fourth round, Rick. Yep, you, you don't want to forget Jones' ability to punch to the body. He knocked out Virgil Hill with one shot to the body. And Hill just laid there paralyzed, couldn't move. Jones pot shotting him, and he can get away with doing that because he's so quick. Right. Yeah. And that's what his corner was telling him to do, and he's doing exactly what they told him to do, which is go out there and pick your spots. At some point, and he might want to do it while he's still relatively fresh, Gonzalez is going to have to go in and engage if he can take it. It's just so difficult when a guy's that quick and just hitting you from every angle that you can't see. Tried the uppercut. There's a left that landed. Gonzalez actually backing off now in this round. Exactly. He's in against just the whole package. It's just a, a big, that's a good right. He just. Step back is what I'm saying, Rich. If you can just step back and then land a right like that, and you can't even stop it, then you got problems. I don't think he wants to wait on Jones that way. Now he's telling him you doubt yourself. This was Roy Jones Jr.'s round. Get inside. Jones is very smart. Look at that uppercut. Mm. That's a guy who knows how to fight. That was experience right there. There's that right hand, Rich. I See, just... that's the pot shotting I talked about. He can just, because he's so quick, he can get away with that. 
Not many guys can do that. I think maybe Mosley can do that. Matt Kurohara trying to pump up Gonzalez. So he trained too hard. Let's see what happens. Round five. Oh, there's a left hand inside. The same type of punch that put Gonzalez down in the first round. And we'll see if he can get up from this one. He'll get up. Oh, he's, he's in big trouble here. But... Jones just went out and unloaded that left hook and right on the button. Oh. There's another hard punch. Gonzalez is in trouble. He's trying to fight his way out and throw some punches. I guess he figures at this point, what else can he do? Well, he actually ran into a left on the way in. Exactly. There's a left that landed on Gonzalez. Gonzalez showing some heart here, Rich. Uh, he's all hard. He's throwing. Been down twice. Well, Gonzalez has been in this situation. He was knocked out three times, remember, against Julian Lederlohn. But that's not Roy Jones Jr. No. But he will get up. If there's some fight in him, that's how he earned this type of fight. Jones just walked right across and bang. There's another punch. Look at this. He's a thing of beauty. Right hand. Gonzalez absorbing some punishment in this round for sure. Another right hand over the top. Just so quick. That's the one we saw in the last round. Now well, he's just unloading. And Julio can't stop the punches. No, he can't. He's not quick enough. He's not defensively skilled enough. But still he fights on. And still adheres to his fight plan. Get close, bang, body punches. He's still there. He's not wobbly, to say the least. It's almost like he expected to have to go down a couple of times. Now, Roy's taking a little time off here. There's that quick little left. Nice body punch. Remember that Virgil Hill body punch you were talking about? Gonzalez kind of wobbly on that throw right there. He's having to take a few punches, uppercuts inside, very powerful punches. He's trying hard, he's throwing a lot of punches, Gonzalez, but the crowd doesn't go crazy because they don't really believe that, he, <laughs> that he's doing any damage. Look at Roy, just smiling. That's yeah. good, that's good. Well, Roy knows that the guy's got heart, you know, and he expected it. And he said that all the time. He said, that's whenever you talk to Jones about Julio, he'd say he's got great heart. All right, let's take a look at the knockdown. Look at oh. that left hook, just so quick. And he never saw it. He just never saw it. So the first you realize what's happened to you is when you're down on the ground, you realize that you've been knocked down and you're asking yourself, how did I get down here? Here's where I was talking about him, just the three little quick lefts right there. That hurts. Those make you a little dizzy. And that's when he staggered across. Bang, 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 like that. What round we in? Six, six round. Matt Kurahara whispered something to Julio, and Julio whispered back. It was difficult to say. I think that was something real heart to heart. I think they both know what the situation is here. Maybe want to give Julio one last shot. Go out there. Give it your all, throw everything you've got here and see if you can make something happen. I don't think they're anticipating he'll be able to go 12, but during the sixth round, and he certainly endeared himself to a lot of folks, by the way, he bounces right back up. Those, those two punches that put him down are just wicked. Roy comes back with that left that's been so effective tonight. It's a it's sort of a, a leaping hook, and there's the right hand over the top that they can't, uh, Julio cannot stop. And what he does, he kind of picks you off like a sniper, doesn't he, Rich? Well, yes, he does. And and uh, the thing is, is when you've been hit by a sniper, you don't expect it, you don't see it coming. Exactly. Another 
right hand and Jones lands as Gonzalez tries to make a little offense here. He's taking some punishment, but he's got a lot of courage. Gonzalez continues to throw. And then the Cobra springs back. It makes you a little reluctant to rush in there, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's just devastating. Uh-oh. Yeah, that almost turned Gonzalez around right there. That hurt him. Gonzalez holding his hand up his jab, almost a, a, a backhand on it. Jones, he's, he's really puzzled here. He's confused. He's getting a little dizzy from all the head punches he's taken. Good uppercut from Jones. So whatever he wants to throw seems to land. Gonzalez keeps pressing forward. May not have the best tools in the world, but the man has been there to fight. Big crowd on hand tonight to watch this exhibition of boxing. I would say Roy Jones Jr. has fought close to a perfect fight here. I don't see how he can do anything better than what he's been doing. He's just, he counters so well, and then when he initiates, he can't be stopped. So what, what are you going to do? Looking good. Way Let's to take keep a look at some of this great uh, Roy Jones Jr. action. You see him get that little, again, the little left short. There's that kind of backhanded jab, and look Whoa. at the way that Jones countered off it and nearly turned him around with it. Yep. Just... Wanted out of there. I'm looking at Julio, and he seemed to have a real hard time actually getting off the stool. He had to physically push himself up off the stool. Round seven. Roy Jones Jr. Looking to close the deal if he gets the opportunity. Gonzalez has been down twice in this fight. Both from extremely lightning fast quick left hooks that he had no defense for. He's also absorbed a lot of straight rights over the top of his left glove. And some combinations. Julio's legs are giving way here. I'm watching those legs. They're skinny legs anyway to begin with. He doesn't have a real strong foundation underneath him with those legs. And they're giving away more and more. So far, he's pitched more than a shutout, I'm sure, on the judges' cards. Maybe Julio got one round, the second round. Julio unloading a little bit here. Jones covering up in the corner, countering. Look out for the heads. Well, you, don't get, you don't get much of a clean shot on Jones in these situations, even when you're unloading. But you've got to keep throwing. I mean, the... You have no choice. You've got to try to hit him with something. And at least there, he's within firing range. Again, as we talked about earlier, even if you're hitting him on the arm or something. It's better than being out of long range and missing and getting hit with counters. When you see Jones back out in the center of the ring, you get the feeling he's ready to, to try to force something. Because that's where he does the damage out there. Now he's back over on the ropes. A lot of people didn't think it might go this long. Rich, now we're inside a minute round seven. Julio trying to put some power into those punches. But you never see it to get a clean shot, and when he does. Not in the open. Uh, Jones is rolling. He's got his hands up high. He lets take some punches on his shoulders. Oh, 
Quick right to the chest of Gonzalez. We should also keep in mind that, you know, you think that Jones should be able to go out there and finish the show as you put it. But remember what he said about his hands, about how his fists have been hurting him, how they're brutal. Oh, Oh, well, he got real aggressive there, right into the cameraman almost. That's, see, that's when he unloads for a quick burst of five, ten seconds. Murkison asked him, is his punches light, light, any lighter? He said, no, there's that punch. Julio's head came almost into your living room, folks. We go to round eight in Los Angeles. Roy Jones Jr. will he seal the deal in this round? Julio Gonzalez still trying to throw effective punches. He's not landed really an effective punch to the head in the fight. He's landed several good body shots, but not enough to be winning rounds. Oh, there's that quick uppercut, and he comes back over the top with it. It's a thing of beauty. He goes uppercut, and then he goes over the top. Doubled up with the right hand. That's just talent, Rich. I don't know what else to say about it. He throws them all angles. But you did say he mentioned Gonzalez's punches were still hard. I guess he's felt some of those body punches. And Jones, two rights to the body by Jones. Many guys, when they're facing a height and reach disadvantage, will not try to throw body punches from long range. There's a right-handed guy in. They don't, they don't want to stand out there and throw them against the taller fighter, right? That's right. I mean, the, you know, the normal thing, the, the, the normal MO is if you're a shorter fighter to try to get inside to throw those body punches. But Jones is so fast that even that he can throw those body shots from outside and the man can't react against him. We're in round eight from Los Angeles. Roy Jones putting on a boxing exhibition. Fans a little bit restless at times tonight. But you can't rush an artiste. He's going to do what he has to do when he wants to do it. Right hand, left. Jones picking up the pace a little bit here. And Gonzalez boring in. Hey, the guy's still standing. So if you're still standing, you got a chance. He's still trying. Jones is looking to catapult from this fight into a fight with Felix Trinidad, assuming Trinidad defeats Bernard Hopkins, which is a big assumption, of course, but when they fight September 15th. Well, slowest round of the fight. Absolutely, and the crowd's letting them know it. I was waiting for you to say it, because I didn't have anything to say about it. That's the end of round eight, thank goodness. And so they're, they're hoping that this will be the, the fight with Trinidad will be the crowning glory of what's been a, a brilliant career. But you can't fault the guy when he's fought everybody out there. You still get those calling for him to fight, the uh, German fighter, Mikoshevsky. But they seem reluctant to come to America to fight. And Jones says he's not going to Germany to fight him. Well, Jones fought Tony in 1994, and that was a super middleweight title. So here he is fighting light heavy. Didn't they have a deal signed with Buster Douglas at one time? Right, they did, in fact. In fact, Jones should have probably gone through with that fight. He had it, the, the fight was there for him, then he pulled out of it. So Lou Savarese took over for him and knocked out Douglas in one round. <laughs> Would have been an easy night and an interesting night. 
We're in round nine. Julio Gonzalez may be discouraged, but he's still on his feet. Jones said that his dad told him in fighting Gonzalez because Gonzalez is so big and strong. Look, you can't move a mountain all at once. You've got to do it bit by bit. And, and Roy, I think, is, agrees with that. And he says, look, I'm not Rocky Balboa. I'm not, uh, it's not the, you know, you hit Well, there's that left moves. again. It, uh, Julio just took another hard left. Yeah, and it, and. There's an uppercut and a right. Those punches are too clean and too stinging. Mm. Roy's just chipping away like you said. Jones. Because I'm sure it didn't help Julio's confidence to be knocked down in the first couple of minutes of the fight here tonight. Oh, he, now he's staggered. Now he's staggered. Let's see if Jones actually tries to finish. I just did the bolo punch, putting on a show. You get the sense that Jones is going to end it right there as the crowd came to its feet a little bit here. I mean, there's no legs left in Gonzalez, as you were pointing out, Rich. I mean, he's just standing there, but he's throwing. Oh, yeah, he'll throw probably while he's falling to the canvas. All right, as you can see, Julio Gonzalez really was getting hit. Roy Jones actually leaping with that punch, leaping in, much in the manner that Floyd Patterson used to do it when he was heavyweight champion, when he threw the leaping left hook. That was the leaping right hand from Jones there. He confuses Jones with the windup, lands the right. Gonzalez really with no defense, but Matt Corraca basically telling, go out and knock that guy out. <laughs> yeah, go knock him out. We shall proceed to the 10th round. Gonzalez was close to going out in that round. He just refuses so far. <laughs> 71 fights between the two and only one defeat. And that by disqualification. But Gonzalez has lived up to the billing of a guy who's got a lot of heart. Well, you saw that left hook to the body from Jones. That's a largely underrated facet of his attack. Again, the left hook to the body. Thais tells him to keep him up, but I thought that was a legal block. Julio, well, yeah, a little more reluctant to let his fist fly. Because Jones is such a great counter puncher. Well, you were talking about the doubt that he had over in this duel, and it's just, it's almost paralyzed him. He looks like just, just can't do it. Can't go in there and, because he doesn't want to go down. I think his goal right now is not to go down. I think he really wanted to just keep incredible pressure on Jones and really make him fight. But, uh, that first round knockdown took some of the starch out of Gonzalez. And he's been unable to mount the kind of pressure I think that he had hoped. Under one minute left in round 10. Jones firing the right and coming back with the left. Maybe trying to take care of business right here. There's no quit in Julio Garcia, though. No, he keeps trying to throw. He is outclassed. There's no question about it. But he keeps trying. I 
believe he's going to make it to the tenth round. Jones didn't really work hard in this round. Jones didn't do much in that round. Or didn't do as much possibly as he could have. Reason for a few of the boos here. Basically what he's telling him, try to rough him up. Even if you have to foul him, just do something to get him out of his game. I don't think Gonzalez has, has it in him to, to fight dirty. I think he's just a, a, a good-hearted guy who grinds out there. And here's but, Julio. He's taking a oh, good right hand. beating, laughing, smiling in his corner. I think Roy's going to step it up here, Rick. Yeah. Now he's leaning and he's going to step back. He's only landed three pretty good shots. In the fight business, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. I think this is a more impressive performance by Jones than against guys like Eric Harding and those no names that he fought in recent uh, in recent fights. He's fighting a better opponent here tonight and fighting better, fighting a great fight. Well, you're not going to get. Real excited when you're fighting Eric Harding and Reggie Johnson or Derek Harley, those type of guys. But he does what he has to do and doesn't really care to allow other people to tell him how to fight his game. He's a champion. I think the feeling among many here probably is that that having seen Jones do what he did in the first round and then again in the fifth round score those terrific knockdowns with those quick punches is that he could have continued to do that maybe and knock uh, Gonzalez out. Good right hand there. I, I, my question would be if you have brittle hands and bad hands is it is it more difficult on those hands to go 12 rounds and have these long fights or just take care of business in three or four yeah, rounds and get out of there. Yeah, That's an interesting point. Because I honestly believe if he stepped up, stepped it up, he, he could have had this. He could have had it a lot earlier. Especially after that fifth round. He's always tried to counter there a little bit, but he's just uh, the thing. It, I'm seeing which is that Gonzalez is not able to wade in at all. Even though he might want to take him to TJ or he wants to take him, but he just can't go in there. He can't get in there. Well, it's difficult against the guy with this mobility. And he's basically an outside fighter. Change there. I didn't get too fired up about it. We're going to go the distance. Did you think that would happen? So he just told him here three minute drill. He wants him to give him three hard minutes if he can. If he can pull it out. He's taking a lot of punches though to be doing that. We're in the final round here at Staples Center. Julio Gonzalez is still standing. Roy Jones Jr. has knocked him down twice in the first round and the fifth round. Gonzalez has tried to mount some kind of offense in this fight, but has found it too distasteful to go in there and have to eat as much leather as he eats from the quickness that he does from Roy Jones Jr. It's not because he doesn't want to, it's basically because he can't. Jones once again with that quick left that has done so much damage in this fight. And you've got to always remember Joe's philosophy. He doesn't believe he's in there to get hit. He's in there to hit. That's right. He says, that's why I'm not the Rocky. It's not you hit me and then I hit you. No. My philosophy is I hit you and you don't hit me. Not a bad way to go, I would think. And he is 32 years old now. And it might prolong his career more than most people when they start going downhill. Not to have to take so many punches. 
a clash of heads there. Yeah, Gonzalez a little frustrated there as he has been since the first round when he realized he probably didn't have enough to go in there and exchange with this fighter. He probably learned all he needed to know with that one single left hook of in the, the first, first round. The second minute of the fight. Right. I mean, it was so quick. It was so typical a la Roy Jones. So here's Julio. See, he's not even fighting like a desperate fighter at no. this point. He would think as far behind as he is, and he knows he is, that he would, he would launch a, 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 just a completely desperate arsenal. But he's been hit so much. Well, he, he actually throws the jab out there and kind of brings it back a little bit because he's so afraid of releasing it that he's not there to protect from the right hand. And, and you don't do that in the 12th round of a fight that you're getting skunked on, you know. He's just afraid to throw it. That, there's a right hand inside. That's what I'm talking about. Third knockdown of the fight. He'll get up and do everything he can to finish this fight. That's what his goal was, I think, from way back. You got to give credit to Jones. So there's a little desperation in the final 30 seconds, Rich. There's where I thought he'd be, but. Yeah, this is what people were hoping they'd see more. Oh, he's in a bad way again. Yeah. They finally started mixing it up toward the end here, round 12, and there you go. And Gonzalez is still standing and big smile on his face. As this one goes the distance. Yes. How about the kid for his back? Stay in the ring. Stay in the ring. Yeah, he does. Michael Bum. Here at Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Robert Bird scores the bout 119 to 106. Larry Rosadilla scores it 118 to 107. Peter Tremetera scores it 119 to 106. All for the winner by unanimous decision and still the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Well, there you have it, Rich Murata. Roy Jones Jr. comes to Los Angeles and shows us why he is the best pound for pound in the world, many people believe.